What's good, YouTube? Devil 92 here, back again once again today, people. Today, we are here to watch, review, react, speculate, whatever you want to call it, to the new Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee gameplay footage from Nintendo's Treehouse this past week at E3. If you can't tell, I am sick and tired. Not for any reason in particular. They just so happen to be going on at the same time. Um, I was probably asleep when this happened, um, but I was laying in bed just now and staring at the ceiling and my work ethic can't allow me to be awake without doing something so i checked twitter and someone for the 800th time asked me when are you going to react to the new footage when are you going to do this and i figured you know what let's do it why not so this is like my fourth or fifth time trying to record this uh, i've learned some things from my mess ups number one most of the time when i record videos like this i tend to mute the video audio so that you know i'm not trying to commentate over someone else's commentary it gets kind of confusing um, but I realized when it comes to something like this, their commentary actually provides more insight to what's going on in the screen. So I kind of want well both in this sense. Also, I know I tend to be long-winded. We're not going to watch this in any slow speed or anything like that. Because um, I didn't realize when I sat down to do this, there was a 48-minute video. <laughs> I did not realize that <laughs> at all. <coughs> and if I try and watch it, or if I try and do this video like I normally would, we'll be here for three hours. So we're not doing that. So I think the best way for me to go about this is to just record myself reacting to the entire thing and just cut it up and give you guys the meaty, juicy parts um, with the, the topics of conversation and the reactions and whatnot. And then we're good to go. Yeah. So if you guys want to watch this in its entirety, it is linked in the description below. If you want to watch it without our commentary, it's linked in the description below. So make sure you check it out. I did that without even trying. I didn't even plan to sync that or anything. Why? Yo. Fun fact. Story. This dude right here. What's his name? Bill Trenton? Bill. Did he say his name already? Bill Trenton? Bill Trenton? What? Something like that. All I know is when I went to E3 like two or three years ago, it was me, PK, Kristen, and Mo. We went to E3 together. Um, we were at the Nintendo booth or something. We were by the Nintendo booth or something. And, of course, PK being the crazy, like, Nintendo stand that he is, um, this dude, Bill Trin, walked past us on the floor. And I want you to know, PK was like, Oh my god! Bill! Oh my god! It's Bill Trin! Oh my god! And I, will, I kid you not, this nigga Bill Trin curved the life out of PK! Oh my god! He didn't even stop to- didn't even- it, it was one of those things where, like, you could tell he heard his name being called. But he was clearly on a mission. I mean, like, to, to his credit, he was, he was he was walking kind of fast. He looked like he was trying to get somewhere. He wasn't trying to stop and, you know, sign autographs or anything like that. But it was just hilarious because, like, I know PK. So it was fucking hilarious because this nigga got curved so hardcore. It was hilarious. PK's going to hate that I shared that story, but it was funny. I'm sorry. Up until now, we've developed them on handheld systems, but this time around, of course, it's uh, on Nintendo Switch, which we envision people are going to be playing in their living room, so we had another take uh, on Pokemon in general, of, you know, what, what would that look like, and what would a Pokemon for everyone be? What would a Pokemon for everyone be? I also said up to this point, we only developed them on handhelds. We're just going to act like Colosseum and XD just didn't exist. Battle Revolution was never made. That's the game we're playing right now. All right, Doug. There's so many people out there playing Pokemon Go, but some of the younger kids maybe didn't get a chance to do that. So I had them in mind, as well as all of our existing fans, really wanting this to be truly a Pokemon for everyone. Okay, but what's the ratio? What's the ratio? What's the ratio? Before we get into before we get into the game, and I see that chick is playing. That chick is playing right there. You know, women just got the right to drive, and they're already playing video games. I'm kidding. 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 Time out. Don't get offended. It's a joke. Uh, but he said we're trying to keep our kids in mind when it comes to we're trying to keep the younger audience in mind as well as our older fans what's the ratio what's like what's the actual ratio because it seems like every generation of pokemon games gets more and more hand holdy when you say younger fans what is it demographic are we talking about like two-year-olds <laughs> you know i understand you gotta start them young gotta <coughs> gotta get them catch them all <coughs> <coughs> at a real young age excuse me but it's like every generation gets more and more handholdy i just don't i don't get it i don't get it and like they do little things to assist 
the older generation. They do little things to appeal to the older generation. When Mega Evolution was first introduced, we got Charizard, Blastoise, and Venusaur that automatically got all the Gen 1ers and everyone that played Pokemon growing up all excited and on board for the new gens. But it's like, I, w I want that ratio to be a little more balanced. I don't want 95% of your focus being on the younger generation and then we'll just put a little bit of shit in here for the older fans. Why? Like, why? Like, I had a conversation with Shady about this. Um, when we were, went to Disneyland a month ago, and we were talking about why why do they focus so much on the younger audience? And it's one of those things where like it makes sense. Don't get me wrong. I, I think I think it's more so like I'm I'm more so upset about it. It's one of those things where I understand why. I just wish it wasn't that way. That's the best way to put it. And fuck that noise about kids don't have smartphones niggas in second grade have smartphones now pokemon go is available for tablet you don't even need a smartphone to play that goddamn game so i don't want to hear that that was your that was your whole basis for making this game is because some of the younger kids that's why i said like how young are you trying to get to like three and four year olds they don't even understand what the fuck's going on, on the screen so the mod actually pops up and that's how you encounter it that sign also said that larger mons give you more experience it's a level 6 kakuna with 6 cp Who, how the hell you get 999 pokeballs so it's literally just like oh I hope there's not microtransactions in this game do I have to go and spend Pokestops to get more Pokeballs so it's literally just like Pokemon Go with raspberries uh, being on Nintendo Switch and of course in the living room, you, we figured people would be playing along with their friends and family. And we wanted to do a new take on this kind of Pokemon catching experience with these intuitive controls where you're just kind of flicking the Nintendo Switch controller and throwing out Pokeballs. That's stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just, that's just stupid. The whole point of Nintendo Switch is to get up and go with it. So I, I, I don't want to sit and play this game with my family. And I also say that when you capture wild Pokemon, you earn experience points and those get uh, shared among the entire Pokemon in your party. Dog. So it's a universal experience here that you can't turn off. So it's a universal, and I want to just point out that they did all these battles in Viridian Forest. It's not even battles. They're just encountering mons. Now I know in this game, you can battle. So can you only battle trainers? You can only battle other trainers, but wild mons are like Pokemon Go. You don't fight them. You throw berries and catch them. Cause that's what they were saying. Like we want to implement the Pokemon Go mechanics and they literally said, like, up until this point in the series, you would battle them on, lower its HP, and catch it. I feel like that... It's one of those things where, like... It's, it's a really conflicting mentality for me because I... I'm a firm believer. It's one of those things where I always say, like, when you guys spaz out, like, where is this, where is that? Like, I got you, don't worry. And that same mentality applies for Pokemon. Whenever people spaz out and they get all upset over one thing or another about Pokemon, it's like, relax. Like, Pokemon has been around for 20 years. They know what they're doing. Like, you, like, you don't know better than Pokemon. Like, that's as simple as it gets. That's the blunt reality. You don't know better than Pokemon. They've been making these games for 20 years. They've been wildly successful in them. Let them do them. Stop stressing. Let them do them. That's always been my mentality. But at the same time, right now my thought process is like if it's not broken why change it why change it the entire ever since day one the notion of catching wild mons i don't know i don't know i mean i'm open to it but at the same time it's just why i mean i guess you can't really do a pokemon go mechanic without it it would be like a raid battle every battle would be like a raid battle where you would have to fight the mon and then get a chance to catch it afterwards and what the fuck is up with that metapod 
Or that canopy. What's up with all that glowing shit around him? You're gaining experience points, of course. Later on, they're gonna be moving around, so you're gonna need to try a lot of different techniques. Oh, he means like on this screen, not in the wild. They're gonna be moving around a lot, so it'll be harder to catch them from like side to side. And I guess those little, the little lights that are around them in the wild is like the difficulty. You know, it's a nice aesthetic to add, but I'll tell you right now, when I play Pokemon Go, unless it's for a field research or some shit like that, I don't ever do curveballs. I play Pokemon Go one-handed, and I take that bitch and flip, now, just like that, and catch Mons. As, uh, I don't do none of this <clears throat> extra shit unless I, like, shoulder, uh, need to finish a field challenge or some shit. So they do have an experience share. The experience share was on. I'm guessing in the actual game you'll have an experience share this early. With some of the Pokemon, that there are graphic indicators, some kind of aura around the Pokemon. Oh, is that correct? Oh. Yeah, explain that, dog. <laughs> so he's explaining the aura that's around the Mons in the wild. But it is dope that you can have a Mon following behind you. I like little Charmander wobbling trying to catch up. And this chick that's playing, where are you going? I guess she's trying to find a mon that has an aura around it. A bunch of the same species of Pokemon, so there's a little bit of differentiators there. Like a red aura to indicate bigger Pokemon of that species, or blue aura to indicate that they're much smaller than normal. So that's what it means. That's what the aura means. So if it's red, it's a bigger one, and you'll get more experience from it. That's right, and I, I notice here that Pikachu's wagging its tail. It's a special ability or power, you might say, of your partner Pokemon. It'll wag its tail when there's an item nearby and letting you know that there's something to pick up. So it looks like with the redesign of... <laughs> I mean, sure, and I feel like I'm nitpicking at this point, but again, it's like, it's how hand-holdy can we get? What's the point in a hidden item if the partner Pokemon, which is attached to you from Inception, tells you where they're all at? Like I said, I feel like it's, it's really being nitpicky, almost petty, because, like, in the grand scheme of things, do hidden items really matter? No, but at the same time, like... Why? They also have your partner Pokemon, first off, him tossing Pikachu out there like that is dope. But they were saying that your partner Pokemon and the Mon that follows behind you are separate. They're they're considered separate, and the, whatever Mon that follows behind you, if it's large enough, you can ride it as well. So, interesting. They said the graphics are reminiscent of the anime. Doug, I gotta let you know, the anime fucking sucks. <laughs> the graphics are just better in general, which I can appreciate. So, oh, there are a metric butt fuck ton of wild mons there. Stop talking about Ash. Stop talking about Ash, though. So, one aspect of the game that a lot of people in the YouTube community have been upset about is the inability to nuzlocke these games. And, well, number one, you have to step back and realize that Nuzlocke is a fan thing. You know, they don't make these games with the notion of Nuzlocking in mind. Um, but I was talking to Shady about it, and the reason I say it, it, the inability to do it is because you can't grind. You, you can't grind against Mons in the wild. The only way you get experience is by catching Pokemon. And of course, in Nuzlocke, you can only catch the first Mon in every route. So I was talking to Shady about it, and he was saying, well, you have to do like a self-imposed rule of like, you can catch the first Mon, and that's all that counts. And then everything you catch after that, is just fodder. You know, it doesn't matter. You can't use them. Wait, Pikachu learned double kick? Since the fuck when? Since the fuck when does Pikachu get double kick? Did they give him that for... There is a metric butt fuck ton of Pokemon on the screen just now. 
They give him double kick for the first gym? Doug. I'm trying my hardest to not... That metapod is CP7. <laughs> I'm trying my hardest to not just... Tear into every aspect of it. Oh shit, it's co-op! See that Squirtle? I'm trying my hardest not to tear into every aspect of the game. But obviously when you watch something, you're going to be more critical than, than uh, ready to offer praise or whatever. And you know, I like things about the game, I like the graphics, you know, I mentioned a little Pikachu and then put my file behind you and whatnot. But, again, I go I, I go back to the notion of like, how hand-holding are we going to get? Like, literally, how hand are we going to get? We have, we removed 60% of the battles in the game. Your partner Pokemon... Tells you where hidden items are. <laughs> you get experience from catching all the mons across your entire party. In the TV show, there were a lot of Pokemon trainers that were able to catch Pokemon without battling them, so you kind of get that sense here with the wild Pokemon encounters. It's really a cool simulation. No, I don't want to play the TV show. I don't want to play the TV show. Can we? Can I get into a meeting with Bill Trinan? Or Jinichi Masuda or somebody and let them know that hey, the TV show is an abomination of the game. There's a fucking Butterfree, Doug. It's an abomination. It is it is such a warped version of what the game actually is. Please do not make the games akin to the TV show. Don't do that. It's it's like two entirely separate like realities. And as fans, we've accepted that. We've accepted that it's two entirely different realities. The show is so wild and off the wall and non-canonical that we don't even care anymore. We don't even care. You can be as wild as you fucking want. They fucking fused Blastoise and Venusaur. Are we going to do that in this game since you're trying to make it more akin to the anime? Like, dog, I don't want the game to be anything like the show. I don't. Ash Gray is fun because you get to play through the storyline, but the mechanics are still the game. What I want is a Pokemon game, dog get to battle as well and that can be a big help for somebody who's more of a novice player 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 players are in their living room playing on their TVs and someone maybe comes in you can just quickly join in the game and enjoy the experience together why is it that they they try and focus so much on playing in the living room playing as a family playing in the living room yada 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 etc 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 when it's like the gaming industry, the gaming market is mobile. That's what people want. That's why you made Pokemon Go. Like, the idea is mobile, mobile, mobile. It's not to sit in your living room. The entire point of Nintendo Switch is that you can pick that bitch up and go somewhere with it. Don't make a game that's based around sitting in my living room. Why is it after every transition, the, the player 2 looked at this again? Why do you have to respawn and drop from the heavens again? Why can't you just spawn in once and they walk around with you? I don't get it. And the other thing that I've noticed that they've kind of glossed over is the pertinence of Player 2 is really non-existent. The game itself doesn't change when you have two players. It doesn't. Technically, like he said, for novice players, it makes battles even easier because you get two mons to battle against one. Basically, Player 2 spawns in and they get to use your Pokemon. It's not like Player 2 spawns in and you get to... Uh, have a whole separate team of your own. It's not. They spawn in, and basically you have two people using six mods. So, I don't know. I don't know. And he keeps talking about younger players. Fuck the kids! Damn, Teresa! She, so, she, she swapped her follow mon to Onyx instead of Charizard. Or instead of Charizard, instead of Charmander. So it's permanent. If it's a small mon, it just follows behind you. That is dope that you show the scale. <laughs> so if it's a larger mod that you set as the mod that follows behind you, you get to ride it. That's dope. But what I was saying is they kind of glossed over the actual pertinence of Player 2. It, you know, Player 2 actually... <laughs> player 2 is about to drop in right now. Player 2 actually doesn't matter. All it does is it gives you... A chance to move around that's it like you still get to use the other players inventory you like player two doesn't get any sort of story progression or anything literally it's just a second player that gets to spawn in and play with you 
And in this sense, they're saying, so someone else can help novice players. What? <laughs> Fuck novice players, dog. <laughs> I, I guess at this point, I kind of have to just accept that this isn't a true Pokemon game. And I think Game Freak even knows that as well. Because they made sure when they announced this to announce, oh, a new main series Pokemon game coming in 2019, by the way. You know, it's one of those things where I think they knew good and well going into this. Their whole goal was to pick up on the Pokemon Go market, jump onto the Switch, and add a whole bunch of little glitz and glam and flair. And they knew that once they were going to start showing some of the details of this and see how bare bones and handheld the game actually is, that people were going to be upset. So in order to, 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 to glaze that over, it's by the way, by the way, by the way, new game coming in 2019. So I think it's one of those things where I can't even really justify being upset with certain things because at the end of the day, it falls under the umbrella of it's not a main series game. You just have to accept it as that. It's not a main series game. It's not meant to be Gen 8. It's not meant to do all that. The sole purpose of this game is to bank in on Go and to jump on the Switch. It's not meant to be a full, a full fledged, a flushed out Pokemon game. And I think that once, I know myself personally, I know, I think that once a lot of people finally realize and accept that, they'll stop nitpicking and having issues with the game. And I know that might sound a little hypocritical um, because I've been pointing things out here and there throughout the video so far, but I mean, I'm just talking about what I see in the video. I'm still okay with it in the sense of it is what it is. <coughs> who the fuck is Trace? And why is he shouting at me from down the street? あの、今作あの、これはもうそうですけど、主人公もそうですけど、あの、ピカチュウ版の当時のそれとはちょっと違う、え、キャラクターを登場させてます。so this is actually the rival in these games, and you'll see that it's uh, different than the rival that appeared in uh, Pokemon Yellow version, which uh, these games are based off of. And there's a lot of other differences in the characters as well. The rival is Trace! And our rival Trace just gave us five potions. But you'll see, even though it, we're technically calling it your rival, uh, he's actually quite kind to you. Uh, of course, he has other personality traits, like he gets scared very easily. I think you're going to have fun seeing uh, in which situations he gets scared at. Your rival doesn't help you! Bring back Silver! <sighs> you can't have a rivalry with someone who is like, uh, whatever. Your Pokemon are hurt, let me help you. Like, that's not... He is, don't call him, if that's the case, don't call him a rival. Don't call him a rival. He is your ally. He is your ally. And you just so happen to have a similar goal. He's not your rival. Don't just, at this point, no. No. Uh, Ooh, look at that thick ass Chansey. I do like the detail and how, like, how close-knit and flushed out the town seems to be. You know, it was one thing that was really aggravating about the games. You know, you kind of just accepted it as is, but it was one of those things that was really kind of aggravating originally is that they would call it a town or a city, and it would really only have, like, three buildings and a gym. You know, now, with the with the update, upgrading graphics and whatnot, now you can actually have three houses, a Pokemon Center, and a gym, and, you know, look at all the greenery. Look at all the accessories that they've added, all the aesthetic shit they've added. So now it feels like you've actually stepped into a city. Now it feels like you've actually stepped into a town. Like, they tried to do that with Lumios and 6th Gen, and really it just felt like a really big walkway with a bunch of buildings I can't go into. You know, it's like, instead of having to run all the way around Lumios, you know, you could have just cut all that shit out and gave me the three towns. I mean, the, the three houses. You know, I, I appreciate the effort, don't get me wrong, but I would rather just have the simplified three houses in a Pokemon Center and a gym than to give me this gigantic landscape with a whole bunch of grayscale buildings that I can't interact with. You know, it's kind of like to each his own at that point. Yadon. So we actually have side quests in the game? Favors? So these kind of little events we've uh, peppered throughout the game that weren't in the original P uh, Pokemon Yellow version. Well, 
So she's just giving us a slowpoke? It's also very interesting that the Oh no, we're just keeping it company. <laughs> Why are we staring at Slowpoke's asshole, dog? Pretty Slowpoke like thing to do there, I think. Well, perhaps we should uh, take uh, the advice of our rival and head toward the gym. Yeah, sure. It's not your rival. I mean, that was dope, though. Just the notion of adding a so any sort of side quest to the game is dope. I'm down for it. You guys know I love the RPG. <laughs> <coughs> Dog, the gym looks lit! Holy shit, it does look like out of the anime. Pewter City Gym only knows, allows trainers that have... Wait, what? What does that text say? Hold up. Hold up. Run that back. What does the text say? What mod is that on the statue? You're here to challenge the gym, aren't you? I'm not a trainer, but I can tell if you're worthy of challenging the gym leader. Now let's get started. Peter City Gym only allows trainers who know the type matchups to enter. There are a few Pokemon types that have an advantage against the gym leader's rock type Pokemon, but for trainers who have never challenged the gym before, we have them use either grass or water type Pokemon. You have to show me a grass or water type Pokemon if you want to face the leader. Why? Like that's that is the epitome of handholding. That that sucks out any aspect of difficulty. Period. 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 That that sucks out any aspect of difficulty, not just difficulty but enjoyment. Period. I will tell you right now, growing up, and this this is the shit. This is what Janichi Masuda and Bill Trin and whoever the fuck else works in the game needs to listen to. Growing up, one of the fun aspects of playing this game was the actual difficulty of it. Was to go in and just run the process of trial and error. Figure out what works. Figure out what doesn't. There's 800 fucking Pokemon. Let me enjoy that. Let me immerse myself in the world. Let me actually feel like I'm a trainer who's going through this journey. And you're gonna fuck up. You're gonna make mistakes. What I don't want is to go into the gym and not only, like, originally it was it was kind of cool because, like, the dude, Clyde the guy or whatever you want to call it, he would give you advice. He would help you and say, yo, you might want to bring a grass type. You might want to bring a water type. But to sit there and say, you cannot fight the gym leader. Until you bring what is super effective against him. And admittedly, this is the first gym. And he did say, you know, for a first time challengers, whatever. Cool, I get it. Maybe, maybe, being optimistic here, every single gym doesn't make you do that. But still, like, that sucks any sort of difficulty. And in turn, a portion of enjoyment from the game. So, like, again, like, like the point I made earlier where it's like, I kind of have to, like push that that little discrepancy to the side and just file it under it's a side game it's it's made for little kids it's not meant to be serious this is not how main pokemon games are gonna go but at the same time i would be lying to you if i said i wouldn't be surprised if this ends up in gen 8 if they don't bring a mechanic like this to gen 8 because if let's go pikachu let's go eevee sells 20 million copies then they're gonna think the game as a whole was a success and they're going to look toward this for their next games. It's just, it's really, it's just, as, as a long-time fan of Pokemon, that's why I said, like, what is the ratio? What is the ratio of you making this game for a younger audience versus your entire audience? That's the big issue that I have. It's like, I get it. You want to appeal to kids. You know, if you appeal to a seven-year-old that's out right now, he's going to go to his mom and say, Mom, 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 buy me this game. Buy me both versions of this game. And then he's going to sit there and say, buy me both versions of every single generation that has come out since. And in turn, if he loves all that, he'll stick around for the next ten years. I get that. But it's... It's just... 
it comes to a point where certain things happen where it's, it's just so frustrating to stomach. That's all. Like, I don't mind a little hand-holding here and there because I understand why. But it just gets to a point where it's just so... Like, you're not allowed to face a gym leader unless you have what's super effective. Like, really? Like, it, it was already hand-holdy enough when we were kids because I don't know if anyone noticed I'm sure you did. But it's like, whatever your next gym was, whatever the next gym battle was, you found what was super effective for it throughout beforehand. That's why in like, um, in Gen 1, on the route between Lavender Town and Celadon, you can catch Vulpex, you can catch Growlithe, depending on the game. You can catch what's super effective in the next gym there. Because the next gym obviously was, uh, Erica. Look at Blaine. He's on an island surrounded by water. And he's a fire type gym leader. You can catch on the boat water types all around him. So I just, I just don't get I don't understand like at least when it was handheldy it wasn't so blatantly obvious handheldy you know they wove it into the game but for you to sit here and say I can't challenge a gym leader unless I have what's super effective against him it's a side game it's a side game spectator seats but it's a side game it's a side game Pikachu with double kick about to mess this gym up dog <coughs> so we don't get to see you fight Brock you cut away right as you're about to fight Brock why don't we get to see you battle Brock what we were making the Pokeball Plus. We knew we were gonna, you know, it was gonna come out, but we felt that if it was empty when you bought it, you feel kind of lonely. So we were thinking of Pokemon to put inside of the Pokeball Plus when players first get it, and deciding which Pokemon to put in there. We came up, we just came down to Mew, you know, the mythical Pokemon Mew. That'd be the most appropriate. So when players go to the store and they're on their way back home with it, they'll be able to kind of hear Mew cry from inside of the ball, and uh, it'll be an interesting experience. That's right, so then you can transfer that Mew into your game, um, and you can also put other Pokemon into the Pokeball and take them with you when you go out of- Wait, can you transfer Mons from Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee back to Pokemon Go? Or is it just from Go to the Switch? Because if that's the fucking case, maybe they'll explain it, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm heated right now. I'm gonna be fucking mad. Hey, if you don't play Pokemon Go, they make you jump through like 78,000 hoops to get Mew in Pokemon Go. And if you're telling me right now I can pay $19.99 to get fucking Mew right away, first off, shame on me for paying 20 bucks to get Mew. But either way, I'm committed to playing the goddamn game, so that's besides the point. But at the end of the day, what it takes to get Mew in Go versus what it takes to get Mew in Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, that's fucking, like, like that's like borderline insulting. Are you kidding me? You just buy the Pokeball and you get Mew. It took me like two and a half months to finish that mythical quest bullshit in Pokemon Go to get a fucking Mew. I had to evolve a Gyarados. I had to catch a goddamn Ditto. You know how fucking stupid Dittos are in fucking Pokemon Go? Come on, dog. They just give you a Mew? Based on your movement and your activity, you can... <laughs> oh, so you get to play online from the internet. I see you, Pokemon Go. Ooh, look at that. It looks so nice. Oh my god. It looks so nice. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that uh, animation is kind of reminiscent of the uh, maybe the link cable that you had to use to trade Pokemon back then. We just kind of digitized that into a cool trading sequence. With Pokemon Go, and you can send Pokemon from Pokemon Go into Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, correct? But can you send them back? Can you send them back? You see that fire ass ham? Ooh, I see you, Bill. I see you, Bill. Ooh, hit him with that. Hit him with that shit right there, like. They have a pokey stop. On top of it, it was a pokey stop. Look, that's a fucking pokey stop. Okay, the design is dope. I'll give you that. 
actually is in that same location and replaces it. There's no safari zone in the game? It's Go Park instead. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. In the back part. I don't know how I feel about that. Pokemon Go, any of the Kanto region Pokemon, including their Alolan variants, uh, and transfer them to the game, and they'll appear in Go Park here. This looks like a, a fun place for the Pokemon. Pokemon is very fun. So that's it. They just appear. You can't use them or anything. They just appear on the screen. Holy shit. <laughs> Gyarados and Moltres, you know, just having a conversation. Look at Gengar. And so once you've sent a Pokemon from Pokemon Go here to Go Park, uh, then how do you bring it into the game? That nigga was fast as shit! There's another one! It's original info on Pokemon Go will be changed. <laughs> it's time. So after talking to him, they're able to choose the catch option, which brings him to the catching or encounter screen. And if you catch them, then they're joining your party, pretty much. That's wild. What? Teresa, where the hell were you throwing that? And you'll see if you transfer over Pokemon from Pokemon Go that have a really high CP level, they'll appear in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee at a pretty much a higher level. They'll be stronger. So that will make them harder to capture. So if you transfer from Pokemon Go to Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, are they Dunzo in your Go game? Because it said its information in Pokemon Go will be changed. Is there a limit to how many mods you can transfer over? And did he get experiences now from that? And you can receive Pokemon from Pokemon Go. It doesn't matter whose Pokemon Go it is. You can get them from friends, maybe a parent or grandparents. You can get a whole bunch of different Pokemon from Pokemon Go and see what they're like in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. And when Damn, that nigga just took off! That, um, they leave your Pokemon Go, and in exchange you would get some candies. Oh, so it's like transferring Mons. So yeah, so if you choose to catch it, it's permanent. You can't send it back to your Go game. But the reason I was saying to you experience for it is because you could just go out and catch a whole bunch of Mons in Pokemon Go, transfer your 600 Pidgeys into your Go Park, and then just catch a whole bunch of them and get experience. We've introduced a new system to strengthen Pokemon with candy and Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. What? And we've got, we've got a couple of slides just to show off what that actually, how that actually works. So you can see on this screen here, it uh, gives you the option to send to Professor. Quick candy. Well, the hell is a quick candy? And by depending on the number of Pokemon you actually send to Professor Oak uh, with this option, you're able to get a variety of candy. So this one is a quick candy you saw on screen there. So you get to transfer Mons to Oak, and they'll give you candies in return, which help you level up Mons. You had quick candy, health candy, mighty candy, tough candy, smart candy, courage candy, quick candy. I already said that. What? Is this for like EVs and IVs? Yeah, it is. And that's your overall CP. And by giving these candy to your Pokemon, you're able to power up their different stats. Mm. It's an interesting take. It's an interesting take, and it's an interesting way to incorporate more aspects of Go, like the candies, into the game. 
um, there's actually a way that that builds back into the gameplay. We're going to have uh, Pikachu, Eevee, and Let's Go, the unknown characters, unknown, the Pokemon that resemble L-E-T-S-G-O and the exclamation mark, appear in the LA area. So go out and catch them if you can. Well, I'm so I fucking mad. On my, uh, my God damn it, I need a Pokemon fucking game. unknown. <laughs> With Pokemon Go, there are so many new players that are experiencing Pokemon for the first time. But of course, our longtime fans who have loved Pokemon games, you know, for over all these years, are extremely important to us. With these games, I'm really hoping that I can kind of bring them together and get everyone to really enjoy Pokemon. No! 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 <laughs> you want to know the best way to do that? You want to know the best way to do that? Put a difficulty setting in the game. Put a difficulty modifier in the game. That is the best way to do that. So that older, more experienced players can play a challenging game. And there's still the base, the bare bones version of the game newcomers can enjoy. That is literally the answer to everything. That is the answer to it all, right then and there. That's all you need to do. That's all you need to do. Literally. Bill, are you watching? Teresa, are you watching? Mr. Masuda, are you watching? Whoever else, just put a difficulty modifier in the game. That is literally the answer. That's insane. Like, we've talked about everything else, all these little things. Literally just put a setting in the game. Like, there's between shift and set. Put a setting in the game that makes it so you don't have to have what's super effective to take on the gym. Make it so your rival has entirely different text, and he's actually your rival. Make it so mons don't get experience. Your entire party gets experience just because you caught a Pokemon. No, just put in like include two different versions of the game in the game. Hell, make it so you have to beat the game once to unlock the other one. That's fine with me. But if you want to ensure. Both of your fan bases are happy, and you can make a game that pleases everyone. That's that's the best way to do it. So overall, my experience with Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, I would uh, say a it's aesthetically pleasing. The game looks amazing. It's great. I, I think the way they incorporated Pokemon Go into the actual Pokemon games is A1. They did an amazing job with it. When it comes down to the actual mechanics of the game, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. You know, the, the little things that you add that make the game so painfully, almost to the point of, like, you're insulting the player with how easy and hand-holding the game is. That's why I said, well, what is your market audience for this game? Two-year-olds? Like, it's, it's to the point where it's like, if I'm playing this game, it's just like, you can only bring a mod that's water or grass into this gym. Well, no shit. I didn't need you to fucking tell me that. You know, it's to the point where it's, 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 it's ridiculous. It's literally ridiculous at this point. There's no other word for it. It's ridiculous how easy and hand-holding the game has become. Now, as I said before, I'm to the point where, and maybe this is just for me to get by. Because, you know, 7th Gen had a lot of hand-holding in it as well. Maybe I'm telling myself, it's a side game. It's a side game. It's meant for kids. It's meant for Pokemon Go integration. It's meant to be a first step into the Switch. It's a side game. You know, I don't, I don't know. I, you, your expectation for a side game can only be so high. You know what I mean? Like, they can only be so high. You can't expect a full-fledged Pokemon game from a side game. You know, if you do, you're kind of being unrealistic. So, for all these discrepancies that I have with the game, I... I, I Put that under the, the overarching umbrella of it's a side game. And I'm optimistic that this new game we're going to get in 2019 will be the game we want. You know, the changes made from Sun and Moon to Ultra Sun and Moon are welcomed. And if you didn't play Ultra Sun and Moon versus Sun and Moon, then you don't get it. You don't realize. It, you don't understand it. They did make welcome changes to the game, and I appreciate that. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are easily the most difficult Pokemon games we have. I'm with that. That's the game I want to fucking play. I want it to be challenging. I want it to be trial and error. I want to go in there and get my ass handed to me. I want it to feel like that immersion. Like I'm a Pokemon trainer going through it all with my Pokemon by my side. That's what I want. What I don't want is to go into 
a color-coded video game and told bring blue and green to take out brown that's i don't want that i don't want that i don't want that so i will play let's go pikachu let's go eevee when it comes out i will like i said the game looks amazing how much replayability the game has is an entirely different question i'll tell you right now i would 100 percent rather just play pokemon go than this if I had to compare the two, since they said they're making this for kids that don't have a smartphone or whatever, I'd much rather just play Pokemon Go than this. But, again, as a side game, it's dope. It's dope. From what I've seen so far, I don't know. I was going to rate it. I can't really rate it. We just saw Viridian Forest. I don't know. I'm going to play it, but my expectations are not very high. When everyone and their mother, when Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee were first announced, when they first leaked, everyone thought it was going to be Gen 8. And I don't care if you didn't think it was going to be Gen 8. I'm talking about, in general, a large majority of people thought it was going to be Gen 8. When we saw the first trailer, people still thought it was going to be Gen 8. And I said time and time again, this is not Generation 8. This is a side game. Like, literally the names of the game shout side game. So, I don't know. I don't know. Like imagine if they were to have Gem 1. It was Pokemon Let's Go Charizard. Pokemon Let's Go Blastoise. Like it's a side game. Dog. I don't know. It's a side game. So I can accept all of the inconsistencies and things I don't like. And just filter it under that as a side game. And I'm optimistic that when Gen 8 actually hits. We'll get a much better well rounded game. Here's hoping for the best. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And I'll catch you guys next time. Until then, I'm out this bitch. Bye.